Did, did you always, like if I was in high school with you, uh, 13, 14, 15 years old, did you always have an absolute killer instinct where I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove the way to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill this guy when we face him. Was it always like that when you were in high school or that kind of developed later on? Yeah, I think it developed over a period of time. And I think there was a work ethic that was in me. Um, I think most people probably know a few things about me, but I was never, I would say, like a prodigy. You know, I wasn't like the kid where you see Tiger Woods swinging on the Johnny Carson show at two or three years old, and, you know, his swing looks as good as it did at three years old as it did, you know, as he, as he mm. grew older. Or, you know, certain players that, ha that had this unbelievable uh, prodigy aspect to themselves. I, I, I saw myself as someone who probably had some other traits that maybe were hard to identify, but that were really sustainable over time, which was, I would say, work ethic and, and discipline. And that was instilled in me by, I think, my parents. I mean, there was part of it that they gave me, but also just behaviorally growing up in an environment where my dad was out, the wor out to work every morning, you know, trying to go make a living for our family. And my mom woke up every day trying to figure out how to make sure the home was comfortable for us and, you know, to support the kids. So there was this discipline that I had that even as 13, 14, 15 years old, where all these other boys were, I went to an all-boy school in the Bay Area, and I remember showing up my first day as freshman year, I didn't have much, you know, hair under my arms or anything like that, I was like, and these other kids came in shaving, and I'm like, what the hell is this? I didn't know how to put the pads on in my pants when I tried out for freshman football, I mean, I had never played until that point except in the street, so these kids came out there, they had you know, helmets and shoulder pads that they had worn for four years through Pop Warner. And I went on the field and I was like, I'm going to get killed out here. You know, and my freshman year, I didn't even play. I was the backup quarterback on a team that went 0 and 8. That says a lot. <laughs> I couldn't get on the field and we never won a game anyway. I mean, it's one thing to be the starting quarterback and to lose. If they don't even think you're good enough to be a starting quarterback on a team that's 0 and 8, you must really suck. And the reason why I played my second year was because that quarterback quit because he's like, I'm not playing football anymore. We suck. I'm going to focus on basketball. So naturally, I was like, oh, cool. I'll continue to, you know, work on my skill because I actually had a halfway decent arm. But a lot of it was even going into my second year in high school, there were workouts in the morning at 6 a.m. before school. And I was like, okay, I can, I can get up at 6 a.m. and I can go do these rope drills where you'd run through the rope. You see a lot of people do that. There were these hills that we would run up. And there was probably less than 10 people there, but I was probably one of the three that were there almost every single day to try to continue to push myself to grow in these maybe physical areas that I was really behind a lot of the other people at. Because naturally, no one's good at everything. I mean, that's just not the way life works. We're all talented at certain things, but we can really continue to improve our weaknesses if we're humble enough to identify them and we can build on our strengths. And I think we're all trying to find a more well-rounded aspect to ourselves. but a lot of that has to come with this, uh, this understanding about yourself that what you know is very limited and what you don't know is limitless. And you have an opportunity every day to surround yourself with people to help you grow. And that could be, in my case, it very much was my parents early on. And then as I learned to love the sport of football, yeah, I was watching kind of on the periphery of pro athletes, but there was a high school, there was a, a junior college football coach that I wanted to become a better passer because I had a good arm. And he was a three-sport coach at a junior college. His name was Tom Martinez, one of my great mentors. And he coached women's softball, which is how really I knew him, women's basketball and men's football. And... I would go up there and I, I would go up there to his camp to, to learn to throw the ball better when I was in four, 14 years old, 15 years old. And it just became this, uh, like I said, life was pretty simple when you could kick a ball or throw it. And I, for me, it was throwing it and I wanted to throw a ball better. So who better than to find this guy who was probably ahead of his time as a coach and he taught me how to throw the ball uh, with some good fundamentals. And I really saw that as like, wow, I can go see someone who has more knowledge than me and I can learn from him and I can take him back to my school and everyone's going to go, wow, Tom, you made some improvements. And I think that was a good learning experience for me even at a young age. So it's, it, wasn't, it wasn't the, uh, you know, because there's a couple different ways that you, it happens, right? Like in the in business world, you're kind of, 
do the business, you get into real estate, insurance, technology, whatever it is, and then all of a sudden you're like, let me see if I can make money with this thing. Then it's kind of like, oh my God, this is actually great. And then you kind of size yourself up against other people and are like, wow, I think I can actually beat that guy. And, I can, and who is the guy that does it this way? Let me go to that guy. Oh, wow, I didn't know about this. So kind of like we were telling the story yeah. about Hernandez. But when, when was it, like, when was it where you said, no, I think I can play against everybody? Because even in, in college, if you think about the two Drews in your life, right? Yeah. You're, you're in Michigan. You got what? Brian Greasy, I believe, right? And then Drew. Go Blue. Yeah. And then you got Drew Henson, who becomes a, like you, he was also a baseball player too. He ended up, yeah. I think, getting drafted by the Yankees, yeah. right? Drew Henson. And, and it was an interesting structure the coach had. One quarter, one quarter, you know, two quarters, two quarters, first half, second half, which is kind of tough to create momentum. I think you guys went 21 and five or 20 and five or something like that with the record you had. And then, so, but you were like a backup to Drew and then comes Drew Bledsoe, backup to Drew again. So there's a backup. Are you in your mind saying where the market, kind of like the movie Seabiscuit, yeah, you're just a horse to help the other guy get better. You're not the horse that's supposed to be the number one horse. So you always train to kind of be here to build the confidence in the other guy that's going. At what point did you say, these guys have no freaking clue who the hell I am. I'm a number one guy. Did that ever click in your mind where you were number two saying, I belong being number one? Well, I think there was a naturally a very competitive part of me. And I love that. And I, can I go back a little bit? Of course. To give you a yeah. little context too. So my freshman year in football, I didn't, I didn't even play. Literally didn't play. Maybe two or three passes. The coach from the sideline screamed at me one time my freshman year, Brady, you're moving in slow motion. And um, I was. I mean, I was slow as shit. <laughs> still, still am. So going into my second year, I, I, like I said, the guy quit ahead of me. So I became the junior varsity quarterback. There were three teams in my high school. And I had a coach named Bob Vanal, Perry Carter, Joe Hessian at Sarah High School. And they were there for the football experience. They were having as much fun as the kids were. They didn't see it as varsity football. They were there to embrace the love of the game. And for the kids that weren't good enough to play on varsity. And they really took me under their wing. And we had so much fun that second year. I love my football experience. One of the great years of my entire life. I really started working hard with Tom Martinez to throw the ball better. My third year, I won the starting job in my high school. And I loved the sport so much that I stopped playing basketball and I just played baseball and football. But in the summers, I would go and my dad, who was very available to me with the greatest mentor, the greatest dad I could ever imagine, was so right there by my side to say, hey dad, I wanna be a better football player. Great, let's take you to the University of Arizona camp. Let's take you to the Cal Berkeley camp. Let's take you to uh, the Stanford camp. You know, this is when you just sign up and there's yep. a thousand other kids and you're just in a group and, you know, that's just the way it was. But my dad was there to say, go for it, son. And if there was a blessing in my life that I would say, you know, some of the things I blessed with hard work, discipline, you know what I was also blessed with? Being very naive. I had no idea how hard it was. <laughs> and, but I believed because I was like, oh, no, no, like I'm, I'm going to get better and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be better. Well, going into my fourth year in high school, I was recruited, but not like a lot of the top kids. There was, look, I was big. I was the size I am now, tall. I had a good arm. But there were a lot of other physical deficiencies that they saw. So I wasn't a high recruit. So I, there was, and it was a different era where, look, we're in the digital age now. That's not the way things worked back in 1994. We had to make VCR tapes with my dad in his office when I said, Dad, we got to, like, put together the most clips that I have. And this is when my dad would film the games. I mean, now it's like Channel 5 broadcasts every high school game in the area. <laughs> like, this was my dad with a camcorder. And every time the ball was thrown, he'd be focused on me, right? And the ball would go this way. And he'd stand up. And the camera would go to the left, and he'd be watching, and he'd start jumping out, go! <laughs> so, of course, we missed, like, every important throw that I had in high school. So we pieced together enough, enough clips to, like, go, hey, man, where, get, Tommy, where do you think you want to go to college? And I was like, I don't know, like, University of Illinois. And I was looking at a lot of, like, n maybe not top-tier college programs. And in the end, I was like, well, yeah, just let's send one to USC. Let's send one to Michigan. And I was like, do you think we should send one to Michigan, Dad? And he's like, yeah, may as well. You know, you think you like it. Of course, I'm from California. You know, I didn't 
Michigan. That's a long way from California. So I send these tapes out, and there's a little bit of buzz about me, and I start getting recruited. And I get these letters, and of course I'm like, wow, I get, every day I'm getting these different letters from schools saying, oh, you know, you, we consider you a prospect, continue to keep up the good work, and I would file them all, you know, in a file folder. And my, my high school counselor came up to me, and he's like, Tom, we got to start applying to colleges. And I'm like, dude, I'm getting a scholarship. What are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, no, we're going to apply to all these colleges. <laughs> and um, funny story, I never applied to any college. But I actually got halfway decent through my fourth year in college that the, the momentum picked up. And I wanted to go, I, I got offered a scholarship to UCLA. And then they turned me away at the last minute because another kid signed before me. And I really wanted to go to USC. That was probably my first choice, but they didn't want me either. They signed another kid who was one of the top recruits on the West Coast. So I never forget these stories, by the way. These are like hardcore ingrained. So then I went to Michigan, I show up, they walk me into the big house. And it's called the big house for a reason. There's 102,000 people in there on a college football Saturday. Now it's expanded like 112,000, it's incredible. And I walk through the tunnel at midfield and they go from Sarah High School in San Mateo, Tom Brady. And I looked up and I was like, I wanna go to fucking school here. <laughs> so. I'm there for two days. I don't talk to my parents the whole time. You know, we didn't have cell phones. And I get to the airport in Detroit, and I call my dad, Collect. And I go, Dad, I think I know where I want to go to college. And, like, he started breaking down, and he's like, what? You know, leaving to, to go all the way back to Michigan. And he said, are you sure you want to go? And I said, Dad, if I want to be the best, I got to beat the best. And this is where the best are. So I showed up on campus as a freshman in the, spring of, in the fall of 1995, I was the seventh quarterback on the depth chart. There were six other guys ahead of me. And Michigan is a, good, is a great college. There's, you know, it competes for national championships. And I wanted to be a great football player. If I was going to be a great football player, I wanted to compete against these other guys. And they were all better than me. Like, like I said, just like in high school, I was deficient. Well, I was, we had another athlete who was in my freshman class at Michigan, Charles Woodson. And... Charles showed up on campus, he had a goatee, he looked like a Greek god, and I was like, how am I in the same locker room as this guy? This guy looks like a physical freak, which he was, and he won the Heisman in his third year, and he went on to be a Hall of Famer in the NFL, and he's one of my great friends, but we laughed because, man, that freshman locker room, I'm looking over there at, like, Charles Woodson as the seventh quarterback, and Charles out there starting on opening day as a true freshman, and I, re I, I, I was you know, worked really hard because I developed this work ethic in high school. And I realized, man, if I want to be good, I got I to gotta wake up in the morning. I got to do the extra work. And I got to show up when other guys aren't. And I've got to learn. I've got to continue to be open to learning. And my freshman year, I redshirted. Never played, barely practiced, but I learned a lot. My second year, I had improved a lot physically through that work. And I started to compete in a way that would, the coaches would notice me a little bit. And my second year, it was a, a few little crazy stories of how it got to be the way that it did, but I ended up becoming the third quarterback in my second year. And it rotated a little bit there my second year, but I went from third in my second year to now my third year, I was competing to be a starter. And because I had learned to compete in high school, and I learned to compete my first two years in college. In fact, I almost thought about leaving Michigan. And in my second year, I got a call from uh, uh, Steve Mariucci at Cal. And he said, Tom, if you come here, you can start for us. And you're going into your third year. If you leave Michigan, you can come here and you can start for us. And of course, Cal was one of my great choices. I thought, shit, I could go home and be a starter. Mm. And I walked into Coach Carr's office, the head coach at Michigan at the time. And I said, coach, like I, you know, what's my situation like? And he said, Brady, I want you to stop worrying about what all the other players on our team are doing. You, all you do is you focus on the starter, the second guy. You don't worry about what you're focused on. You came here to be the best. I want you at this program. And if you're going to be the best, you got to beat out the best. 
And he goes, you got to start working with this guy named Greg Harden, who was another mentor in my life. Greg just came out with the book a few days ago. And Greg had been a sports psychologist at Michigan. And like, you know, we got to start building this knowledge and we got to create a strategy and a plan. And he would said, you know, I would complain all the time that the guys ahead of me were getting more opportunity than I was. There was a certain amount of repetitions in practice. The starter would get 20, the backup would get 10, and I would get two. And I'd go in and I'd say, well, how can I ever get better? All these guys get all the reps and I only get two. And he said, just go in there and focus with the two that you got and make them as perfect as you possibly can. So I said, okay. So that's what I did. They'd put me in for those two. Man, I'd sprint in there like it was Super Bowl 49. Let's go, boys. Here we go. What play we got? And I did really well with those two because I brought enthusiasm. I brought some energy, and I had a, a little more confidence in myself. And it went from two reps to getting four reps because those two were pretty good. Then I had four good reps. Then I got 10 good reps. And before you knew it, through this new attitude, through this new shift that Greg had said to me, you know, Focus on what you can control. Focus on what you're getting, not what anyone else is getting. Whenever you get an opportunity, you take advantage of it. You treat it like it's the Super Bowl. You treat it like it's game day. Go out there and treat practice like no one else does. And I did that every single day. And it was a lot. It was taxing on me. There was a lot of stress for me, even in high school. And I look back at those times, it wasn't probably like a typical college experience because I was really motivated to play. But I had to take it to a new level that the other guys wouldn't. So going into my fourth year, now I had competed off freshman year, sophomore year, going into my third year, and I had learned these tools to compete. And I said, whatever they ask me to do, that's what I'm going to do to the best of my ability. And I went in there, I competed really hard my third year, and I lost the starting job to Brian Greasy. And Brian Greasy led the team to a 12-0 national championship mm. that year. So I was part of a national championship team, and I barely played. So I go into my fourth year, and I was like, now's my time. I worked hard to compete my first three years. Going into my fourth year, I got a great opportunity to play. And I worked hard. It's time for me to come. And they recruited a kid named Drew Henson, to, who was one of the top prospects in the country from Michigan, right next door to University of Michigan. And here he was coming in the door that everyone knew about. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. So all the fans and all the media, they weren't, they, they weren't were interested in Tom Brady, backup quarterback to Brian Greasy, Tom Brady, backup quarterback to Scott Dreisbach his first year or Scott Dreisbach his second year. Now we have Drew Henson coming in. And I was like, the competition's relentless. At first I was looking at the guys ahead of me. Now I got to be looking down at the guys behind me too. But I said, you know what? I'm going to apply the same thing that I learned in those previous years. I'm going to go out there and compete as hard as I can. And I'm going to treat practice like a game. And I'm going to gain the respect of my teammates every day through my work ethic. I'm going to work hard in the weight room. I'm going to work hard in the film room. I'm going to work hard to be a good student. And going into my fourth year, it was a little bit of a battle. And my teammates named me team captain. And I won the starting job. And we had a good year. Um, we finished 10 and three. We, in our bowl game, we played in the Citrus Bowl and we came back from a, I think it was a 10 point lead in the fourth quarter and to win the game. And I was like, man, that was unbelievable. Now that I'm going into my fifth year, like we're going to have a great year. I was 10 and three, learned a lot, you know, beat everyone out. And then I showed up and coach Carr says, well, you're going to compete with Drew Henson to be the starter. 